Welcome to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. Prepare your heart for laughter and tears as we share the unpolished stories of the homeless and hurting, hope and transformation. Here is your host, director of the Union Gospel Mission, Pastor Tim Lane. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I have my friend and co-worker out in the fields. Uh, he is with me, Tom Mooney. He is a pastor, and he is uh, one of our two chaplains at the mission. He has been there for at least 20 years, uh, at least somewhere in that neighborhood. But regardless of that, his heart and his mind and his soul have been given to Christ and to the work of the mission. And so he is dedicated to that. He loves the men. He loves the mission. He uh, he is certainly my friend. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And I appreciate him very much uh, when it's amazing that within months of each other, I lost my wife and he lost his wife. And um, we prayed for each other and I believe we helped each other in many junctures when certainly. we talked about it. And it is a shock to the system. It is uh, leaves you numb and it is just a strange time in your life. And we were just talking about it off air that, you know, uh, you don't know how to describe it to anybody. I mean, <laughs> I mean you can't just say, well, you know, I'm going to grieve for three months and then I'm going to feel this for three months. And it's a limbo land I think you can't even describe unless you've been through it. Would you say Pastor Mooney? Absolutely. And nothing, there is no uh, handbook for it, no instruction manual for it. It's living every day, trusting God, finding joy in his word, in his person, and in his service, and uh, and uh, uh, being ready to meet each day, no matter what comes. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? And the difference being is, and Tom and I were just talking about this, that I had talked to a financial advisor and I wanted to put a little bit of money in there. And he wanted to know what my, my hopes and dreams were was one of the uh, questions. I said, I don't have hopes and dreams. Well, what do you mean? I said, I don't have hopes and dreams. I said, you know, don't misunderstand me. This is not a morose thing I'm trying to say. I'm not overwhelmed with sadness. What I'm trying to get across is, and as Pastor Mooney and I were talking about, we we have the hope of eternity. We have the hope of Christ, and that is no little thing. That's what gets me up in the morning and keeps me going throughout the day, the week, the month, and the year, or how many ever years there are. That is my hope. My hope is in Christ, and that's not just some, hey, I, got, I hope this works out. No, it's a hope that's certain. So don't misunderstand me when I say I don't have hopes and dreams. When you're young, when you're building a, a life, when you're building a family, when you're building a business, and I did that too, when you're <clears throat> doing all these things, you look forward to how this is going to be in the future and how that's going to be, and we're going to do this on vacation, we're going to do this in retirement, we're going to do these things. And those are the kind of dreams the financial advisor was talking about. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to travel? Do you want to see Europe? Do you want to do all these things? I said, you know what? Uh, not really. And I said, all I'm trying to do is be in the ministry, loving Christ more every day, serving when I can, and as long as he wants me, to be there, as long as he wants me to be the director, as long as he wants me to be the pastor. Uh, that's my only hope and dream. But as far as things to do, I mean, you, you, and it may change someday, I don't know. But for right now, you just, you just don't see tomorrow quite the same way, do you, Pastor Mooney? No, you don't. Um, and part of that is that uh, in married life, you... You seek to please your mate and to make things wonderful. Uh, and when that door is closed by death, then your hope changes. And I was, as you were talking, I was thinking about my great hope. And my great hope is in the gospel Amen. of Jesus Me Christ. Too. And my great hope and my great joy is that Sunday after Sunday for all these years, 
at the mission on Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. presenting the gospel. You don't know who you're going to be presenting it to. You don't know how they're going to receive it. No. But the hope is that, that in this gospel is the seed of eternal life, and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the power Amen. of God. And, and when you preach that gospel, lives can be changed. And so my hope is renewed yes. every week in the gospel In the gospel, amen. And I absolutely agree with that. You know, uh, I was talking to some of the women at the women's clothes closet that we have open, some of our volunteers, and describing what what the mission of the mission really is. And, you know, when I'm talking about the Bible, when I'm talking about Christ, when I'm talking about what we believe, there's nothing, there's no real greater joy you have than those moments when you're expressing the Word of God to other people. And so that's why I said I didn't want the financial advisor or you out there to misunderstand when I say I don't have hopes and dreams. I don't have hopes and dreams about doing stuff, right, Tom? Yes. But but I have a lot of I have a lot of hope in in the gospel and I love to preach the gospel. I love to listen to the gospel. Uh for crying out loud, there's just there's nothing more exciting in life than knowing that this is a blip on the roadmap of eternity, right? Absolutely. How many years does the song say? When I've been there 10,000 years, I've no less days sing to sing God. God's praise yes. than when I first begun. Isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. And it, you know, it's not that, hey, 10,000 years and, 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 uh, I, I get 10,000 years. No, 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 no. That's not what it says. After 10,000 years, you don't have, you haven't used up any of the time allotted to you because eternity is eternal. And one of the things at the mission that's so wonderful about the way our ministry happens is when, when a, a new man comes on our drug and alcohol program, they come in hopeless. They do. They do not have hope, and all they know is the pain and the motions of sin and the uh, unmanageability of the consequences. And so they come into the mission. They don't know what to expect. They know it's been bad. They don't want it to get worse. And you sit them down in in your office, and you begin to line by line show them through the Bible how much God loves them and how greatly he committed the greatest resource of heaven, Jesus Christ himself, to bear their sins and be the atoning sacrifice. And when they hear that, and the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, when you give them the gospel and all those words and all that scripture, then God does something that only God can do. Yeah. And and you, you invite them. Do you believe this? Do you believe Matthew 28? that Mary and Mary went to the garden tomb. They met an angel shining like the sun. The guards were stunned like dead men. The angel said, why are you seeking the living living among among the the dead? dead. (laughs) He is not here. He is risen. Amen. They were eyewitnesses, Pastor. They watched him die on Golgotha's hill. They followed the body to the tomb. As soon as the Sabbath was over on the first day of the week, they were back at that tomb. To anoint the body. And the resurrection had happened. They turned to go. The angel said, tell his disciples he'll meet them in Galilee. They turned to go. They think they see the gardener. Yeah. (laughs) And he says, Mary. And they knew who he was. They fell at his feet and began to worship him. Eyewitnesses. So I was talking to a man who had sat in my office and given his heart to the Lord and is really wide-eyed and kind of freaked out about a new (laughs) life. And I said, well, what do you believe about that? And he said, why, pastor, there were eyewitnesses to his resurrection. And then he turned to me and he said, 500 people saw him alive at one time, quoting the book of Acts. And he said, I believe. Amen. And we get to see that. We get to see the hope of the gospel day in and day out. 
Yeah. What a glorious mission. What a glorious opportunity. That's where our hope is. You know what? Everything about it is miraculous. In those days, the the Jews of the time were advanced to many of the other cultures around who put no credence in anything a woman said. But even they took two women to witness against one man. And so you would never put a narrative forward that started with two women. It would never happen. And the writers would have known that. And so they wouldn't, if it was a false narrative, they would have used two men that went to the tomb. But they didn't do that. The women did not have standing, yet they reported to the disciples Amen. that he was alive. And then John and Peter ran to the tomb and saw the empty tomb, saw the napkin folded on the other side of the tomb, yeah. saw the linen laying on that yeah, slab right. where they had laid Christ, and they came back. Eyewitnesses, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, there was a song uh, where the two disciples ran to the tomb, and in he's the alive. So- he's alive. That. Yes, oh. exactly. That's exactly it. He said, John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go because circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high. I'd seen them crucify him and then I saw him die. And you know what? Unfortunately, many people today have only seen him die. They, they, in their heart of hearts, like you said, when a man comes to the realization that all of this is true, I, I love it when a guy says to me, but you know, Pastor, I just don't feel worthy. And I get to look him in the face and say, well, hallelujah, because you're not. Well, what? <laughs> I said, you're not. You're not worthy. And I'm not worthy. And nobody has ever been worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nobody has ever been worth the salvation that Jesus Christ paid his life for. No one. And But that's great. Because if you had to get good first, I know, poor English, but if you had to get better, if you had to do something to get yourself ready for salvation, you had to clean up and polish up, nobody would ever make it. Then it would be religion and not yeah, faith. Well, yeah. By grace are you saved through That's faith. That's right. God has favor for us. Mm-hmm. God knows we can't. God knows our issues. God knows our hang-ups. God knows our heart problems and what we can't see and what we can't do. And his response is, this is how much I love you. I'm sending my son to die for you. And yes, I know everything you've done and it does not deter me, won't stop me. I love you so much. I will shed my blood, my son's blood on the cross Amen. and he will be your kinsman redeemer. Yep. He will be your atoning sacrifice. The That's words right. of John the Baptist ring down through history. Behold the Lamb of God, Amen. which takes away the sin of the world. That's right. The outworking of the gospel the is kins- so beautiful. The kinsman redeemer in Israel could pay the price for a kinsman and redeem him from slavery or whatever the case was. Or redeem his inheritance. Yes, redeem his inheritance. And uh, you see that in Ruth, uh, where where Boaz is a kinsman redeemer. And Jesus is declared our kinsman redeemer. And that's an amazing thing. Uh, and by the way, this just came up the other day. Maybe you'd like to comment on this too, but we know that on the cross, Jesus cries out, Eloi, Eloi, lama samachdani, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And people have said, see, he doubted. What you don't understand, well, maybe you do, but what they don't understand is at the moment that he said that, he felt the full weight of the separation of all mankind and the sins of their that that they had taken on, foisted upon one single human being who was also God. Isn't that a glorious thought? But you know what? One more thing. On that cross, as he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's quoting the 22nd yes, he is. Psalm, David's prophetic 
yes. song of the crucifixion. Yes. And he is bearing in his body every stripe, every agony, and he Everything. still, in comfort to his own spirit, is quoting the word of God as he's dying on the cross. Yes, surrounded by dogs. Um, you know, it's an amazing thing to me because I've often thought, you know, you're looking at the Lord of glory who created the universe, who everything was created through him, and without him, nothing was created, right? By him and for him. And so you are looking at someone that without even a word could have disintegrated everybody in front of him, and they would have deserved it. <laughs> but he didn't do that out of love. You know what? He spit upon, rejected, humiliated, two guys hanging beside him on a cross, also hurling insults at him until one of them realized who he really must be. And Jesus, even in his suffering, in his pain, he still evangelized one more guy. And that's an amazing thing in and of itself, don't you think, Pastor? Amen. Lynn? That old song comes to mind. Uh, it's no wonder that he stumbled as he walked the Calvary road. It's no wonder that he cried out as the blood from his side flowed. It's no wonder all oh, heaven blackened as our sin crushed the divine. It's a wonder of wonders when I saw those sins as mine. Oh, brother, the weight of my own sin could crush me. The weight of everybody's sin would be insurmountable by anyone but that Lord of glory. Hallelujah. And by the way, if you were wrongfully accused, hung on a cross, beaten, tortured, do you think maybe that you would start spraying out some kind of curses on everybody? Most people would. But not one thing did Jesus ever say. I mean... You Father, know, forgive them. Yes, they I, don't know what they're doing. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to bring up. That That is the kind of insult he hurled. No insult, but a prayer. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I'm not so sure that all of them didn't know what they did. And but. then, in that penultimate act, he said, it is finished. Yep. Nothing left for us to do, Pastor. Nope. He did it all. On the cross, he bore the full price of sin. Our pain, suffering, and shame was laid on him. And yeah. we received his righteousness in exchange. And three days later was the great amen to that it is finished. By the power of God, he was raised from the dead. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, there's so many critics of the Bible. There's so many critics of Christ. There's so many people that say fallacious things that that they don't know what they're talking about to begin with. You know, I've had people say, well, there wasn't three days. Uh, how did that work? He was, uh, let me see, it was uh, Saturday. and So, no, that doesn't even make uh, three days. Really? Well, you better go back to Jewish history because any part of one day is counted as a day. So, technically, 1159, that's one day, the next 24-hour period is two days, and one minute after, well, it would be six in the morning because they didn't go by midnight. And day started at sundown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So essentially six to six. And he had to be in the ground before the sunset. Before the Sabbath started. That is correct. But so was it three days? Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, just yes. <laughs> but... Is that the best you can do? I mean, is that the worst insult or is that the worst critic you can have is that you didn't like the way we counted the days? You know, how about all the many numerous claims of Christ? And to your point, all throughout the Old Testament, it is replete with the prophecies of the Christ child. And the uh, whoever heard about a suffering Lord. Isaiah. I, yeah, Isaiah. <laughs> exactly. Point by point of the gospel. Right. He, he, 
made his grave with the rich. He made his death with sinners. Suffering Savior. He was marred more than any man. Yep. We all like sheep have gone astray. Mm -hmm. That he has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. How and, beautiful. You know, how about how about that uh, that even backwards this wicked generation there will be no sign given you but the sign of Jonah. What? Well, take go back and look at at the incident with Jonah. How about how about the fact that a virgin will give birth to a child? Who ever heard of such a thing? And that's not in the New Testament. Oh, well, I mean, it's in the New Testament fulfilled. So you go back to Daniel, you go back to Isaiah, you go back to the prophets, and you will find Christ everywhere along there. For unto us a child is given, unto us a son is born, and his name shall be called Wonderful, which is the Hebrew Counselor. word for miracle. Is it when a virgin conceives, is that a miracle? Oh, yeah. He shall be called counselor. He shall be called Jehovah Gabor, Almighty God. Yeah, he amen. shall be called Ab, Father Ad of eternity. He shall be called the Prince of Peace. And of his kingdom and of his rule, there shall be no end. The zeal of the Lord shall perform this. You know what's amazing to me, Thomas? I liked what Charles Stanley said one time. He said, well, and many other pastors have said it, but it, Charles just came to mind. He said, listen, when you go to your knees, God is not your good buddy up in heaven. <laughs> he's not your, he's, he's not he's your. not the man upstairs. I hate that. Oh, I know. Yeah. The big man upstairs, the man in the white beard. Listen, you are talking about God Almighty. When you're on your knees going to God, uh, you're before the throne of glory. You better have respect for that. The glimpses that we get of what's happening there and the cherubim crying, holy, 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 holy. is the Lord God who is and was and evermore shall be, that should give us a clue. And they fly day and night around the throne of God. Uh, six wings to cover their eyes, <laughs> you know. Their I mean, feet, and two they fly. Yep. Uh, and uh, that in and of itself is a picture of holiness. Perfection of God. Yeah. Um, Which we know. can't conceive. No. But how wonderful to know we're made in his image, and it pleased him to do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, all those things tie together. When Moses went up onto the mountain, he said, what? Take off your shoes because the ground you stand on is holy. Hallelujah. Um, I I just, uh, they say that believers, many people, that we are delusional. That we grasp at something unseen because we need to be fulfilled. I got to tell you, I don't grasp, but yeah. Pastor, <laughs> they don't understand. We have the Holy Spirit the very Spirit of God living Amen. in us and testifying to us of who God is. Amen. They have nothing. We have everything. Amen. You know, once again, uh, we're out of time. So, folks, uh, really, God bless you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. been listening to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. If your heart's been touched and you want to know more about the work of the mission, log on to UGMSAC.com, UGMSAC.com. To donate clothing, food, time, or financial help, call 916-447-3268, 916-447-3268. Thank you so much for listening. Join us again next week at the same time for Voices from the Street.